a very good morning students the last class we were discussing about the various pyrems they are descriptive characteristics and their salient features and we have completed up to anirudha and today we are going to concentrate on another four pyrems and then we will complete the entire pyrems of non chordatas and today we are going to study about the arthropoda another pyrem arthro poda so now when we talk about this arthro poda uh, this arthro poda an example we will have the it is actually arthro means joint poda means feet so joint feeted animals so are called as arthropodas okay and what are all the examples that we have we have cockroach is an example one example and the second example is the butterfly so all these are the joint feeded animals okay so that is what this arthropodas are now when we talk about more about this particular phylum it is the largest phylum of animal kingdom it is the largest phylum because it is having many insects and all so it is the largest phylum okay so it includes all the insects all insects comes under this phylum so it is the largest phylum okay and if you talk about the body of this particular phylum and the body is divisible into three types three parts that is having eight and second it is having the thorax thorax is the chest region and third one is the abdomen so these three are the differentiations you can see it in this particular pile so so far in those uh, pylum that we discussed we don't have this kind of a uh, distinctive features so this animal will have the differentiation in the body that head thorax and abdomen will be there and this animal will also have the body cavity and our body cavity is filled with blood and it consists of hemoglobin but this particular arthropoda they don't have this hemoglobin pigment so the body is covered by hemocele so hemocele is a colorless watery fluid which is present inside this body so that is the peculiar characteristic of this body of this particular animal okay so now i will give you a statement for you to remember this entire phylum a very simple statement easily you can just recall it the statement here is jack this is one word jack second word you remember sparrow okay third you remember met jack jack sparrow or you can even say it as jack sparrow okay anything for making a sense that's all so jack sparrow met santa claus so this statement will help you to recall all the salient features of this particular pylum jack sparrow met santa claus i can even put it as jack sparrow so that it gives a sense okay so jack sparrow met santa claus now what is this jack sparrow so here we will talk first to two letters j and e and this gives a very important point that these phylums are having joint a for appendages okay so they have joint appendages and this joint appendages is for various purpose like locomotion joint appendage means joint feet locomotion feeding feeding is also done by this joint appendages and sensory 
okay so that is what this j joint appendages are clear right and next one we will talk for ck and the ck here it talks about the chitinous exoskeleton it has exoskeleton skeleton means support of the body we human being have endoskeleton body inside our body but this arthropod like cockroach and butterfly if you see the body part outside the skeleton is are very hard but inner it is very soft so outer part is covered by exoskeleton okay and this exoskeleton is made up of chitinous chitinous structure okay so this body will be covered up by this chitinous exoskeleton and this is for the protection of the body so body protection is done by this why protection it prevents to prevent water loss so water loss will be prevented by this kind of a chitinous structure okay now another point you have to remember in this exoskeleton is it when it is developing uh, this will be shed off this is shed off shed off means it falls off periodically okay and that process is called molting process molting process or even it is called ectysis so you this is an important question what define molting or ectysis means this is a statement that you have to write understand so this is what you will remember for uh, ck and both two s's are there so even for s you can talk so many things here the body is segmented body is segmented but in earthworm analytics we study it is a segmented but it is uh, the process are uh, every part of the segment it is having the body parts are similar okay but here it is not like that because the body is distinguished in head, thorax and abdomen. So the body is still segmented. And second S is for they have bilateral symmetry. They have bilateral symmetry. And this one more thing that you have to study here. The coelomate are called zyzocelomate. Already we discussed what is the zyzocelomate. So this S you remember, body is segmented, bilateral and cytocelomate. So next one, we will talk for this sparrow, S is completed, so I just talk for arrow. So O you remember, O. So O already, whenever we study O, you can easily remember, it is organ system level of organizations. You know what is organ system level? No, so many organs does a one physical function. So that is called organ system level of organizations. Then we'll go for M E. So I have just taken these two letters M E, and M E is for we will talk and other important that is the excretion. See excretion so far in platelet menthes we studied flame cell is excretory organ. In Annelida, we studied that is rennet gland is an excretory organ. In Arthropoda, we have Malphigian uh, tubules. It is Malphigian tubulus is an excretory organ. So Malphigian bodies, tubules will be there for excretion. Clear? So that is important. And next one we will talk for this T. So T is for again it is triblo plastic animals okay that is t then here we have this s whenever you remember santa s you remember it is sensitive so the sensory organs s is for sensory organ in this sensory organs are present so what are all the sensory organs that they have it is they have some three different sensory organs so you just note it down it is a antenna Antenna or antenna is a, a is a sensory organ that we will have it. Okay, that is important. Then eye is also a sensory organ. It is important. Then an organ of balance will be there, like a stato uh, cyst. 
the status test will be a sensory organ which is present in this particular animal so this is organ of balance okay so this is important in this santa claus okay so santa alone i have just taken it then we'll go for this the other thing uh, some general things apart from this i will just tell you so with that we will just complete this particular pipe the c is for the circulatory system so we will talk for the circulatory system here the circulatory system is open circulatory system that is why they don't have hemoglobin pigments no blood will be there so it's a blood like fluid open circulatory system that means it is not having any blood vessel to be carried out so it is the circulatory system okay understood right so next one we will just talk some general things here we will talk about this respiration respiration there are various respiratory organs will be there here so it is having gills for respiration number one then it is having book gills this is not in the statement but still uh, extra you just remember respiration is gill book gills as well as book lungs will be there and trachea wind uh, pathway so trachea will be there for respiration and when you talk about the sex of this particular organism the sex is uh dioecious sex is dioecious they are oviparous they are oviparous so oviparous you know no it can produce egg and then the egg ones are being hatched out then you talk about this fertilization process here the fertilization process are always internal fertilization will take place internal development stage here it is two type of development will be there those developments are direct development at the same time they are indirect development okay so a direct and indirect the indirect development means some larval stage so in this the life history of a history includes many larval stage so yeah they have many larval stage so this many larval stage is called metamorphosis meta morphosis morphosis morphology metamorphosis means many larval stage will be there so during that means in, in the physical development after the metamorphosis means physical development after the birth till hatching okay so that is what this metamorphosis are so if you even see the butterfly life cycle first is egg larvae and pupae and cocoon and then it is being formed into butterfly so that is what is called metamorphosis so many development stages will be there in this particular pile okay so this is what the statement i told you to remember jack sparrow met santa claus after that you have to remember the respiration part of it sex fertilization development processes okay so now i'll just go with the examples for this examples is little complicated so i just split up those examples and tell you all the examples anyway you have to remember okay right so the examples the statement i will just give you examples first example that we should talk about the economical importance economical important animals so in this economically economically important animals that we talk so i will give you a statement for you to remember very simple you have the statement called best location okay for apis okay best location for apis apis monkey no so apis is bombay okay best location for apis is bombay when you add bombay one more word you add along with this called lakifer lakifer okay so you can easily remember all this examples now here for best i don't want anything to be mentioned so for location we can add it that is locusta location locusta okay locus 
it is also called as a pest this is a pest actually so this pest is called gregarious pest okay location locusta gregarious pest understand apis apis is anibis anibis apis are anibis okay then bombay for bombex mori bombex mori is a silk worm these animals are used for economical purposes today this is used as a pest okay right and the lacifer is called the lactis so uh, the, uh, kind of a paste like substances it be there so that is called lacifer so this is one part of this example okay second one this is first one second one is we have vectas vectas means one one which carries a disease or whatever it is okay so there are two vectors in genetics we will study for carrying gene but here we study for carrying diseases so here we have vector so vector you remember this statement and ac motor vehicle and ac motor vehicle so what is this and ac motor vehicle and is for and of Phyllis mosquito, so Anopheles. Okay, A is for Aedes, and C is for Culex. Okay, then M for mosquito, mosquito, and vehicle for vector. Anything you can remember. Okay, so Anopheles, Aedes, Culex, mosquito, vectors. Okay, so this is how you can just remember. And another another example also I just added with this king cram is called. So I just write it here. This is actually you have to take down first. So this is the king crab. Crab is an example for arthropods, you know. Crab, king crab. So linulus is an example for this. Linulus. King crab is also called as linulus. Okay, so these examples are enough. Even some two, three examples are there. Is that one example also I just share it with you so that you cannot have any confusions later. That one example also I just, if you want, I just tell you. Uh, since it is in video, you can just refer it afterwards. So those statement is palm tree in Europe. Palm tree in Europe museum this is a statement to remember another example in this pile what is palm palm is for palamaras okay and u is for u paragus and museum is for musca domestica musca domestica is an housefly musca domestica okay so these are all the examples comes under the arthropoda so how many examples you want to recollect you just can recollect it is that clear right so we have completed arthropodas phylum that we will discuss is mollusca the mollusca are called soft body animals the body is soft so they are called soft body or soft bodied animals okay now an example that we will study here is a snail now uh, this one more question here is very important is arthropoda is the largest pile in animal kingdom and this is the second largest pile okay now for this distinct features, I will just tell you uh, the entire thing in one picture. Okay, so that you can easily remember. So the entire thing I'll just talk to you in picture. So first you have to draw the structure of this snail diagram. So this is a structure. Right. So somewhat it looks like this. Okay. Right. So now each one I'll just explain to you so that you can able to understand right so now here the first one is it is having 
a shell that is made up of calcium so it is having calcareous shell so this is point number one so what is the shell shell is made up of outer shell is made up of calcium calcareous clear then second one you talk about the body how the body is the body is unsegmented the body is unsegmented clear and the third one is here it has a distinct head a particular head is present so the head is distinct head will be present third point okay so easily you can remember like this so based on the diagram yes and so far based on the uh, uh, statement we study no no based on the diagram i could make you to study okay third one and the fourth one if you can see the muscle here the fourth one here i just talked to you it is having muscular foot so muscular foot will be this that is fourth one when you talk about it you talk about this muscular foot okay that is the fourth one then fifth one it is see it is having a hump like structure so this is the hump which is called a visceral the visceral hump will be there visceral means important organ general will be there so a visceral hump so this is the fifth part of it okay so this is the visceral hump then above this inside inside so above this visceral hump this is what visceral hump actually i'll just talk to you inside it is now above this is the visceral hump some cover will be there so if you can see the visceral hump this cover no this cover so this cover is covering this visceral hump and that is called as man ma mantle this is called the mantle so mantle will have a soft layer of skin around it so here you find an hump this hump is called the visceral uh, hump so this visceral hump if you just pull it up you find this mantle so below this you will have the mantle and the mantle is very soft okay it is soft layers of skin you just open the mantle you sorry visceral hump inside you will find this mantle which is very soft okay this is point number six okay sequence i'm just telling right sequence right and next one the space you will find in between a space the space you will find in between two things so in between this mantle cavity and the visceral hump so inside if this is the hump and this is a mantle cavity this visceral hump and the mantle cavity in between you will have some space and the space is called mantle cavity mantle cavity this is the seventh one mantle cavity so inside this mantle cavity you will find number of feather like gills will be there number of feathers like gills so it has like gills like structures a feather like gill like structures will be there so this structure is involved for respiration so we call this structure as uh, tinidia okay so tinidia is a structure which is present inside and this is for respiration function okay so this is how the snail respires through the gills which is present inside the mantle cavity tinidia understand so this is the actual the body arrangement of this soft body animal now i will give you a statement for you to remember right so what is the statement so simple i will just give you a b c d okay and t o that is the statement okay that is a word that you have to remember now uh, even you can just add e a b c d e now one more you remember whenever you add d you write r whenever you write e you write a letter called n so we will come back to this later n okay right so now we talk about this a a is for they are aquatic organisms a is for aquatic 
and we will talk for B. B here it is bilateral. B is bilateral. Now, except one mark, this is except in univalve that is in apple snake that is in, in univalve. So, one valve it has so univalve. So, an example is called this apple snail is an example clear right then we'll talk for c c is for coelomate animals c is for coelomate and then we'll go for digestion d okay there's a reason why i just told you to put r so d is for digestion d is for digestion the digestion is complete digestion Complete means it has mouth, it has got anus. So here, the mouth contain, it is having mouth, I told you. The mouth will contain a rasping structures. Okay, a mouth contain a rasping organ which is present inside. And that rasping organ is called radula. This is a rasping organ. Okay, rasping means you know no, it is taking inside for uh, chewing everything. So rasping organ called ranula. So that is why I asked you to put D and R for ranula. Understand? And how this ranula will be there is a transverse of a kind of a teeth. It is a it is actually a teeth-like structure. And this ranula, this is absent in a particular uh, pile. So this is absent in bivalves. So this is absent. It is in present in the that means it is present in the univalve. It is absent here. So here this is a bilateral all the organisms but except the univalve. So that means in apple snail it is present and in bivalves it is absent. It's a teeth like structure. Okay, right. And next one is E for excretory organ. And this excretion, excretion is done by an organ called nephridia. Nephridia. This is an organ, nephridia. Okay. So, so far we studied flame cells, rendered cell, malfusion uh, tubules and now for mollusca we have nephridia. All these are very, very important examples of this. Clear? Right. So, this is important along with this. The next one, we will talk about this T. So, 2. So, you remember 2, 2. So, T twice, O twice, we have to talk. Now, T is for, they are... We will talk here aquatic, so simultaneously here you talk for terrestrial. Terrestrial. Okay, like this you can talk. Then it is also triploblastic. Triploblastic animal. Bilateral triploblastic. That, like that you can easily remember. Then O, I told you, two O's are there. One is for organ system. One is for organ system. And second O is for open circulatory system circulation is open circulation open circulation you know it do not have blood is not carried out by the inside the blood is not inside the blood vessel that's right except okay they are open circulatory system but there is an exception so except very important this is also one mark based that is called um, sepal approach So, cephalopods are the examples for, uh, uh, they it do not have this kind of a open circulatory system. So, what are all the um, cephalo, cephalopods, what are the, all the examples of cephalopods? You can just take it down. That is, the octopus is an example for cephalopods, octopus. And cuttlefish is also an example, no? Uh, see, cuttlefish, then octopus. They are all examples for the cephalopods. So, cephalopods don't have this open type of circulatory system. Understand? Right. This is it. Now, 
since we are talking about the circulatory system we also talk about blood blood okay so here the blood again it contain only we do not contain hemoglobin so it contain a carbon contain uh, sorry copper containing a copper containing respiratory pigment that respiratory pigment is called hemocyanin hemocyanin so it is a respiratory pigment okay respiratory pigment it is having copper in it so copper containing respiratory pigment understand so i hope you can you follow this right so the sex here it is dioecious oviparous so sex alone i just talk and then go for the example point of view examples okay so now what is the sex here the sex is dioecious we talk sex sex are dioecious at the same time they are oviparous they are oviparous then development is indirect the development is indirect in the sense they will have a larva so the larva is very important that is called velgier larva so it is important okay so that's all about the descriptive characteristic of this now we will talk the example of this particular phylum right so examples i will give you a statement for remember now the examples i just written so here you will find the statement please load the secret pc you are telling the pc to load the secret please so p l o a d s p c i have taken it so p for pila is apple snake and l for here you know, this l for loligo the squid then o for octopus called devil fish then a for here we will have this octopus is an important one then a for aplysia is a sea hare then d for dentalism that is tusk shell and s for sepia cuttlefish then here we have p for pictata pearl oyster then c for chitopleura is a chiton so these are all the examples for the molluscas clear right so now we will study the another pile now the another pile is echinodermata echinodermata it is also called as spiny skin spiny skin skin will be having spines so an example here we can even talk about the starfish you see the starfish it with the skin is spine having spines okay so first we will discuss some systems in this what are all the systems it is having so there are so many systems that we will talk so first we will discuss about the systems and then we will go for the statement oriented parts okay so it is having so many systems so based on the systems you can study this chapter okay so first system that we have here it is the endoskeletal system so that is the first system so first one is endo skeletal system so endoskeletal means it forms the support within inside exoskeleton and endoskeleton no that is what see so here the endoskeleton is it has the endoskeletons are formed from a layer called mesoderms so we know there are three uh, layers Uh, ectoderm endoderm and mesoderm so mesoderm lays forming this and it is made up of calcium so it is cal carious and they are ossicles ossicles means small bones are called ossicles that is what this exo endocrine system is that is first system that we have and the second system that it has is the circulatory system circulatory system circulation okay circulatory system is they are open type of circulation open type and they don't have no heart they are open type but they don't have heart 
as well as blood vessels very important point exam point of view they don't have heart and blood vessel but they are open type okay this is the second one now the third one is we'll talk about this excretory organ or excretory system third one so the third system excretory system here it is absent so you need not worry about this excretory system okay and next system is the fourth one is the digestive system digestion so the digestion fourth one here the digestion is complete digestion the digestion is complete if the digestion is completed it has mouth it has got mouth as well as it has got the anus but one thing that you have to understand here the mouth is present in the lower side that is the ventral side it is lower side now the anus is presented on the dorsal side that is upper side that is upper side so that is the that is the uh, uh, digestion complete digestion and mouth part of it and anus part of it understand right the next system that we will study here is the sixth one uh, sorry fifth one uh, is the uh, nervous system so in this the nervous system is poorly developed the nervous system here it is poorly developed it is not perfectly developed it is poorly developed and the next one is a uh, very important the system so it is the sixth system it is water vascular system water vascular system now what is this water vascular system it is done by the tube feet it is by the tube feet as well as it is done by the podia so now this is for the role of this water water vascular system is you remember l c r t so what is l l is for locomotion l is for locomotion and c is for capturing the food and r is for respiration and t is for transportation transport of the food is it clear right and the seventh system is also very important in this the seventh one is the reproduction seventh one is the reproduction now when we talk about the reproduction i will just give you a word that you remember that is s i e r does not make any sense but you can remember that is the simple thing so s is for sexual reproduction i is for indirect development indirect uh, development and e is for external fertilization r is for regeneration regeneration already we have discussed what is this regeneration regeneration means you should always think that if a last body part is there it will again regenerate so that is called this regeneration is so it is regeneration any body part is lost it is being formed once again so cutting off uh, body parts of the lizard is an example for it. so this regeneration means it will cut their body parts if they don't want and once again they can able to take it down so that is what this regeneration is no so once again they can build it up grow up so uh, this process is called auto auto means self autotomy self cutting so very important word this is understand so autotomy is for echinodermatas 
clear so this point that you remember right so now this is all the systems that we have it in this echinodermatous okay so entire things that we have discussed now a few point along with the example we will discuss okay i will give you one statement to remember the statement is most costly ac bed so along with the example we will just complete this one okay so i gave a sentence called most costly ac bed okay so here we'll talk for this m o all this so m is for they are marine animal they are marine okay starfish marine o is for organ system o is for organ system and s is for symmetry symmetry is very important in this why because it has got two type of symmetry one is for the adult and other one is for the larva okay so symmetry part alone you just understand so m o s now adult will always have radial symmetry and larva will have bilateral symmetry don't forget it okay so a r i b so how we can remember you remember it is that clear right then t is for triblo blastic animals is it clear right so c o c o we will take it for coelomate coelomate means it is having body cavity clear right so this one part up to the co we have completed okay then we'll go for example point of it now a c b e d so a c b e d we will just talk for the other part of it the examples part of it okay so up to this is a saline features now the example a a stands for asteria asteria or asterius okay so this asterias are otherwise called as starfish okay the zoological name is called asterius then c is for cucumeria cucumeria okay so cucumeria is called c cucumber c cucumber okay this is one then next one that we will see about the b b is for bristle brittle stars brittle star and this is for the opuria uh, is an imp important one opuria clear then next one is e e is for echinus so this everything will be discussed in your book so it is called sea urchin okay and the last one is d d alone you just remember antidon so d antidon okay so this is called sea lily sea lily okay here uh, even if you want one more uh, statement i'll just give you that is an so this and is for antidon and open open is for opuria here it is so important that is why i told you this one is important okay and opuria can just go for this this is one then and open it is also called as cucumber and open cucumber cucumber for cucumeria so this is also a statement you can easily remember so any one you can remember for your example so that's how the echino dermata clear right so one more phylum is left over with that we will entirely complete this topic phylum that we will discuss is amicardata last phylum in this non cardates amicardata ami means half cardata means string 
backbone so it has only half string okay half string actually earlier this was considered as sub pylum of car data okay it, now it is considered as a pylum but previously this is called as sub pylum in car data we have some sub pylums among that this is called as sub pylum of car data but now it has become an independent pylum in the vert in vertebrates and this pylum is very close to echinodermata okay so these are all the general points that you have to remember semi so, data previously it was under the pylum called sub pylum called cardata now only they have shifted to an independent pylum and this is very close to the echinodermata why because it possess very important this kind of a pylum possess the characteristics that is of both it has in vertebrate as well as the core data characters so both things will be there in vertebrates and core data both pylums characters will be there okay now how it will look it looks like a worm like structure worm like structure and they are soft marine animal soft marine animal okay and you can find the body the body is tuberculous tuberculous why to be uh, it it's formed in the form of a common uh, tube like structure commonly they are called acron or tongue worm this is the actual general characteristic of this we can find the diagram part of it diagram is very simple here uh, the diagram part will be discussed in the book so it is having three different parts will be there so this is second part and the third one it is having the pharyngeal gill split and all so this is the actual structure of this worm tongue worm okay right so now i will give you a statement for you to remember this so i will just talk about a statement called b o t c this word this now this letter you just remember b o c t so what is b you can easily find out it is by later then what is o this is organ system level of organization what is t t is fibroblastic what is c c is for coelomate this is one then if you talk about this body of this tongue worm the body how it is it is cylindrical if it is looking it is cylindrical it is having top most area called proboscis proboscis it will be a structure for any capturing entrapment everything and it has called the short short collar will be there short collar and this entire part is called a long trunk okay this is the entire part of it and these animals are c it is also so i am talking for c okay so c is one is for uh, coelomate second c is for cylindrical cylindrical means you can talk all the structures and the third one is they are ciliary feeders they feed with the help of cilia that means they filter and eat so what they filter they will filter the water as well as food so they filter the things uh, in the aquatic medium and they will eat up okay so this is the uh, part of it so this is structure one example alone here example is very simple only one example you remember balanoglossus is an example balano glossus is an example most of the time exams five mark question this question is asked along with the diagram so very simple uh, you need not get that much tense to understand this draw the diagram what points you can just recall it you can recall it and write it okay right some systems alone we will study and then we will complete this entire pylum so what are all those systems 
again we will talk from the beginning onwards we have so first part we are studied about the body structure second is the nervous so when you talk about the nervous the nerves are primitive just beginning okay primitive nervous system then the respiratory surface or organ here the respiration is mostly by uh, a very important thing that is the uh, gill gill slit and as well as uh, it is open into pharynx pharynx means neck okay gill slit and pharynx gill slit will be there in the form of like this means it is having a slit like this structure okay right then here excretion then this hemicardiata excretion is done by a gland called proboscis gland okay proboscis gland or this gland is also called as glomerulus okay these are all the excretory organs either proboscis gland or the glomerulus okay and here we'll talk about the circulation and the circulatory system here it is open type of circulation and very important the heart is dorsal heart heart is not in the ventral side upper part dorsal side okay and the reproduction again very simple the reproduction is sexual reproduction and fertilization is external fertilization fertilization takes place externally not within the body it takes place outside fertilization always outside fertilization is external and development is indirect development is always indirect indirect development so around 10 to 12 points if you study along with the diagram this emica data hope so nothing more than this so successfully we have completed 10 pylums in non cardiac the next classes we will be concentrating on the cardiac data okay thank you very much